Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 30th of April 2021. For the short term I expect that a third wave at three large degrees may have moved through its middle and may now be completing. It's possible a small correction may have been over at the last low and price may continue upward from here to the next target of 4276. It's also possible we could see a little pullback continue for a few sessions. I have two wave counts at the daily chart level to follow on this weekly chart. At the weekly chart level my S&P analysis sees a fifth wave at cycle degree beginning here. Cycle degree waves would be expected to last from one to several years. The S&P has a strong bullish bias so it could be at the longer end of that several years. I have another weekly chart which we'll get to at the end of the Elliott wave analysis which is more bullish. This first weekly chart sees within cycle wave 5 primary waves 1 and 2 complete here and primary 3 incomplete and then there'll be primary 4 which may not move into one price territory and then primary 5. Primary 3 the middle portion of cycle 5 may only subdivide as an impulse within it intermediate 1 and 2 may be complete and intermediate 3 incomplete. Let's take a look at this at the daily chart level from this slow down here minor wave 2 which is this point here here's the end of intermediate 1 and 2 and the start of intermediate 3 with minor 1 2 and this first daily chart sees minor 3 incomplete. The targets for intermediate 3 and primary 3 are all the same on both my daily charts. In the first instance the next target for intermediate 3 to end would be where it reaches a quality in length with 1 at 4464 but if price gets up to about that target and the structure is incomplete or price just keeps rising then attention turns to the next target where intermediate 3 would reach 1.618 the length of intermediate 1 at 4922. The targets, the first targets for intermediate 3 and primary 3 work together. The second targets for intermediate 3 and primary 3 work together. The first target for primary 3, which works with the first target for intermediate 3, is where primary 3 would reach a quality in length with primary 1 at 4606. The second target, which we would know if we're going to use by the time intermediate wave, wave 3 is complete we'll have an idea as to which one of these we'll be using for primary 3 but for now the second target for primary 3 is where it would reach 1.618 the length of primary 1 at 5469. Within minute wave 5 the last wave to end minor 3 no second wave correction may move beyond its start below the short term invalidation point 4118.38 at the hourly chart level here is the end of minute 3 and 4 and the start of minute wave 5 the last wave up within minor 3 with minuet 1 2 and now sub minuet 1 2 this wave count expects a third wave at sub minuet and minuet degrees to move higher next week and so an increase in upward momentum would be expected. The target for minor wave 3 is for it to reach 1.618 the length of minor wave 1 at 4276 and if subminuet wave 2 continues lower it may not move beyond the start of subminuet 1 below 4123.69. This is the second wave count and I'm going to label these two daily charts first and second because when we get to classic technical analysis we will see that they both have support from different indicators or volume. The second wave count sees instead of minor wave 3 incomplete what if minor wave 3 was over here and minor wave 4 is unfolding as an expanded flat A, B, C. Expanded flats are pretty common structures and here I think wave B is over just over 1.3 times the length of A and it's still within the most common range of up to 1.38 times the length of A. C would be extremely likely to move at least slightly below the end of A to avoid a truncation and a very rare running flat and we may see downward movement next week to find support at the lower edge of the Elliott channel. I'm using this trend line as a guide to where minor 4 may end rather than any specific price point with an eye to expecting a new low at least slightly below this point. 
This channel is important for this wave count next week. Draw the first trend line from 1 to 3, place a parallel copy on 2. Look for support at the lower edge if we do see a pullback continue next week. Minor wave 4 may not move into minor wave 1 price territory below 3.98, 3.87. The targets for Intermediate 3 and Primary 3 are exactly the same on both daily charts. At the hourly chart level, here's a closer look at the possible expanded flat for minor 4, A, B, C, subdividing 3, 3, 5. Minute wave C would now be expected to unfold as a 5 wave motive structure, most likely an impulse, and to make at least a slight new low below the end of minute A. That may mean we need to see an overshoot of the lower edge of the blue channel, which I've copied over here from the daily chart. That's entirely um, that's entirely okay for a fourth wave. They aren't always contained within the channel and the S&P will breach channels only to then return within them or follow the lower edge as it continues higher. At the weekly chart level this is an alternate. It's even more bullish than that first weekly chart. I've moved the degree of labelling within cycle wave 5 down one degree. At primary degree, cycle 5 has to subdivide as a 5 wave motive structure, most likely an impulse, which will be labelled at primary degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Primary waves would be expected to last several months and could even be over a year, or two even. This market has a strong bullish bias. This wave count sees primary wave 1, just the first wave within cycle 5, incomplete with intermediate 1, 2, having moved through the middle of, middle of intermediate 3 back here, now looking for the end of minor 3, 4 and 5 to complete intermediate 3, and then intermediate 4 may not move into intermediate 1 price territory. This wave count is more bullish because it sees an even, long, even longer cycle degree 5th wave. This wave count, I would be looking for a possible end to this bull market in 2029, either March or maybe a little bit more likely October if the 2020s are a mirror image of the 1920s. At the weekly chart level this week completes a gravestone doji and this supports the second Elliott wave count at the daily chart level. This expects a pullback next week. This is a bearish candlestick reversal pattern. A little bit of volume is pushing price higher though, that's a bit bullish, and on balance volume confirms new highs in price, that's also bullish supporting the first Elliott wave count. RSI is overbought but this market has a strong bullish bias and it can reach deeply overbought and remain there for a long period of time. Only when it reaches overbought and then exhibits short term bearish divergence would I read it at the weekly chart level as expecting a bigger correction, that's not the situation yet. ADX is increasing, an upward trend, MACD full bore bullish and ATR overall flat as price moves higher, normal behaviour for this market. At the daily chart level, this is a gravestone doji and this is a hanging man candlestick pattern. These are both bearish candlestick reversal patterns and together they support the second Elliott wave count. Volume is weaker for a downward session than the prior upward session. This does not support the second Elliott wave count. This supports the first Elliott wave count. ADX is now extreme but only just and this market has a strong bullish bias. This can reach very extreme and remain there for a while while price continues on higher. So it really supports neither of those Elliott wave counts. But this strong support for on balance volume offers some reasonable to support to the first Elliott wave count. This offers support to the second Elliott wave count. There is bearish divergence between swing highs at the daily chart level between price and RSI after price reached overbroad and this would expect a pullback to follow. Because this is at the daily chart level and it's not extremely strong I would expect the pullback to be more short term in nature and that's what the second Elliott wave count expects. MACD bearish but not fully so and stochastics returning to neutral. Let's take a look at breadth and volatility. The AD line is a measure of breadth 
New highs from Price and the AD line this week. Also from Lowry's operating company's only AD line. This supports the first Elliott wave count, or at least it tells us that if we do see a pullback develop here, we would expect it to be short term in nature and not a major correction. Pullbacks are absolutely normal and to be expected in a bull market. Price does not move in a straight line. Price rising with support from market breadth suggests a healthy underlying support to this bull market. At the daily chart level, both price and the AD line moved lower on Friday. Neither have made new short term lows. This supports, well from, from back here, this supports the f either Elliott wave count, but it also tells us there's no bearish divergence to support the idea of a bigger pullback here. Expect pullbacks to be more short term in nature if they develop. Between price and inverted VIX though, there is now two weeks in a row of bearish divergence. For the last two weeks, this is a weekly chart, price has been moving higher, but inverted VIX has moved lower. Upward movement from price does not come with a normal corresponding decline in VIX, it comes with an increase in VIX. This is bearish for price and this supports the second Elliott wave count. Both VIX and VVIX for the week have increased, there is no new short term divergence there. At the daily chart level, both price and inverted VIX moved lower on Friday, neither have made new short term lows, there is no new short term bearish divergence. VIX and VVIX both have moved higher on Friday while price moved lower, a normal relationship between them and no new short term divergence there. So the picture is a little bit mixed, which is why I've decided to label them first and second and price is going to tell us which one is correct. If we see a bullish indicator or a bullish signal from the AD line, then I would support that first Elliott wave count. That's all from me at the end of the week with your S&P analysis. I hope all of our members are having a most fabulous weekend.